Hello everybody, welcome to Great Artist Steel. As promised, I'm going to now look at uh, Edward Hopper's gas. Uh, the previous video we've, was quite a long one and I focused on um, Edward Hopper's Hotel Bar Rail Railroad, Railroad done about 12 years after. This one, I'm going to use the same palette. Um, as you can see, I've, I've been practicing, doing a bit of mixing. It'd be quite complex with these colors on here. I'm just going to try and show you what, uh, what, um, how I've mixed some of these. Um, now, the biggest problem I found with this was the actual floor colour. You can see it's kind of like a, a, um, a grey colour, but it's kind of like orangey colours going towards like greys, look a bit pinkish as they come up towards the um, beginning, front, front of the painting. Now, um, what I've, I'm, I'm trying to do is trying to find it with two colours. What I've found that um, I, if I use the yellow, because uh, and, and I guess colour, some of these colours are a bit orange, and if I use a yellow um, and mix it with one of the colours to get these kind of grey oranges over here, I have to use some of the, the violet over here. But when I mix the violet with the yellow, it goes too rich. And when I mix the blue with the yellow, it goes to it goes to green. So what I did, I've just mixed these two together. Now Hopper may have had another colour, um, a, a different kind of purple, but uh, there aren't too many purples. There are actually blue purples around there. Uh, cobalt violet's slightly too red, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of ultramarine blue to make my own hue. So mixing those two, um, start with the cobalt violet, and then just add a bit of the cobalt ultramarine blue to that. So it still stays quite warm, but what I don't want, I don't want a complementary colour, because if I get that too blue, I'll get a black, so I want a colour that's slightly off, com uh, off complementary. Um, it's off complementary, and goes across the red, so if, if uh, the red side, if we're not careful, I could go across the green side, which is the, um, the yellow against the purple blue. Now, <clears throat> if I get my cadmium yellow there, and just see what I get when I start adding these two colours. Remember, there's two colours. The third colour is obviously white, but I don't count that as a third colour. Um, two colour mixing, again, go back to my colour theory video. If you want to understand what the line, I've arrived at this line. Uh, the 18 colours I've put down, I've been narrowed down to 12. Um, cabin yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, vermilion, elizabeth crimson, cobalt violet, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, tarlow blue this time I'm using rather than Prussian blue, viridian green, emerald green. Okay, so I'm going to use these two to create my own hue. So it's a kind of two colour mixing if I, have, if I had that hue, and I'm going to mix it with the yellow. Um, now, just the just a little bit looking at that colour is going. It's just a bit more red with it, orange with it. If it goes a bit more brown, and I want it to go a little bit brownish. I don't want it to start going a shade of that. And I'm looking over there now. Once I have white, will I get that colour at the far end there? It should be a bit warmer. Still looks a little bit too strong, so I think the bl the, the blue I've got there is just a little bit too <clears throat> too red. So what I'm going to do and sound a bit more ultramarine blue to that. Then start again. Put the yellow. And it starts moving over towards the slightly brown. Let's move this out of the way. Then moving it, shifting it over, should look, look a bit more red. And I'm going to use a bit of white. That looks promising. And it gets more red over this side. A bit more violet mixed with these two. And a bit more as it goes across. So I'm getting this kind of colour shift moving. More white will grey it more. And just see it moving down towards the warmer colour again 
quite a lot of white. White will kill it just enough so I get the Just a little bit more ultramarine blue with it. Now, if I just put that on with it on a grey colour, start off. Uh, the burnt sienna will help to help as well to try and get the colour coming through. Just a little bit more yellow with that. And as it drops over, it starts looking a bit more red. Right around here. Remember, these are little colour studies just to see if you've got the right colours. It's hard to know until you've, you've actually uh, done a finished a painting, put the colours next to each other just to see which ones work. I can use a bit more of a, a, a drier brush to take a bit of paint off if it's just a bit too strong within the colours. Now looking at that, I can actually maybe use this same combinations of colours with the yellow to get this kind of lighter colour here where you can see I put more yellow in this and put well, quite a lot of white with it. Same colour, it's almost like an ochre but it's a bit more yellow with it so mixing my own colour so that's the light, the shaded area for like more white, quite a lot of white and it just kills the colour. That should then end up making this look a bit more blue when I put the whoops, clean brush. Lots of brushes needed, everybody, to save your time mixing colours. Uh, save me time, not wasting your time when I'm putting these colours down. I'm just going to look at the bit more white with that. And I can just skip it out bits of light. A bit of a thin brush needed. Tiny little painting like this. I mean, I won't be able to get the detail in there. Um, but what I will do is uh, just see the colour contrast. Really, basically, what's what I'm trying to do is just to see which colours will work against each other. And there's a bit more of a greyer colour around the back there. I'll leave that alone for the moment. Um, now, other, other colours in there. I've got the road colour here. Now, um, it looks like a, a, a neutral grey. It looks a bit greenish to me, kind of greenish grey. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the complementary colours, almost complementary, with the red, cadmium red, viridian green. A bit more green within it. And then add my white. See if we've got the grey there. Perhaps a bit too green at the moment, a bit more red to make it non neutral. That's what's pretty good. And again, a clean brush. Let's put the grey on. The painting at the back of the road there. When you first start, all these colours can look too, too light. I mean, it's when you get all the darker colours in there, they should start looking darker. Um, but uh, I'll have a look. I can always change it later within the painting. That's why it's so difficult um, um, make, doing a painting, because you can't really tell how it's going to work until you've got to the end of it. So you've got to, you're not going to judge it too early. Just keep working away. You might go wrong. You can always correct it. Now, um, next colour is the ochre. I'm going to go for the ochre at the back, using the same colours I've got here, just using those two colours. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of this. Okay. But without actually mix my own ochre, remember I've gone for a purple colour with the uh, cadmium yellow. Got the same colour again, a bit more white with it. A 
And again, I can use a, a, one of the brushes I've used for the lighter colour here. Oops, a bit clumsy there, but uh, just pricking up these colours. A bit of the sienna came through underneath the painting within that. Um, now, the sky colour will be a good go to go for. Um, the sky looks to me like it could be uh, just a, one of the yellow, cadmium yellow again, with the um, taller blue maybe, green blue. If I use a knife to do that, again, using a palette knife, everyone just helps you clean up your, your paint really quickly. And I'm just looking at tarlow blue with that to get the green blue, slightly more green blue. Uh, just, it's not too strong, so bring a bit more white with it. And see how that works. A bit more white will kill the colour a bit. And that's lovely combinations of colours. You can see that straight away, can't you? How beautiful that looks against that. And uh, I'm just going to bring that in now. Just get more clean white in my paint and my palette. So hard to keep all paint clean. A bit lighter. Um, the next one is the greens. Let's go for the greens. Um, the greens again, um, they're quite strong greens. Um, if they use the maybe cobalt blue with the, um, or to carry, I could go on with the yellow. Oops, I said to use, use a knife, everybody. <laughs> I'm using my brush. Things get very dirty, you start using a brush like that. You've got to make sure you're really clean. So no bad habits, make sure you do this, really disciplined. Now I'm gonna go for the taller blue, let's see what I get for the greens there. Again, the same color I use for the sky, but more green. And you can see this, some of these rich greens are already there just by mixing the green. If I keep adding the blue, you go over to a cooler color, cooler green, which you go over this side, which you can use white to Calm it down. Again, I've gone too blue, so I get more yellow. Again, white again, just to calm the colour down. And the kind of colours you can see is not far off. A little bit. It's a little bit more yellow. But the fact is, I've got those two, those two colours with the same pair. Um, is and the way, and I've got similar colours down here with the, with the, with the idea of a pair does suggest that it perhaps actually mixed this way. I mean, uh, uh, or it just happened to coincide, it got the same colours, but it's, it's the, the, ha the fact is, is I've not darkened anything. All I've done, I've added white to this. I've got the darker greens in here. And so there's kind of like evidence of pairings going on. I'm, I'm just gonna put these colours down on the painting, just to see there's no, some darker, richer colours going underneath the paint. Bring the dark colour on. And uh, again, some colours in the back here, but a bit more white, a little bit more green, a bit more white with it, and you get this. Now I need some darker colours to bring those colours out at the moment, but I'm just putting in the colours in. They will, they will look darker when I do when I bring the colours on. How it darks in these colours, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd use black to darken these colours, he's mixing the pairs. But um, I'm, going to use, I'm going to use black to darken them, just for speed. Um, but I think black's allowed for, um, for colours that are um, dark. Um, I mean, uh, you can see, if you keep all the richer, the lighter colours, keep black away from them. 
But when you get some really dark colours, yeah, if it's dark, you put the black in. I mean, I know there's a lot of people say, don't do that, you should mix the colours. But if it's dark, it's dark, and uh, it's not going to make much difference to the painting. So I'm going to um, put the black in with the greens I've mixed. Get some really dark colours. So I can bring in dark colours in here, which more of a dark green against that. And also some very dark colours against the blacks at the back. Help them to get the trees. And going very black into the background there. And then uh, as well, I mean, I can imagine someone like Hopper being more of an expressionist. he perhaps think black's important as part of the expression. Um, I suppose you get other artists who'd be more pure, not think about the black. But seeing the black comes, these dark greens come in. See how dark, bright that sky starts looking. And some of these darker colours here around the back of the greys and the greens there. And um, there's little sticks of the, uh, of the trees being black. I'll just bring them down just to draw some of them in. Just to get an idea. We're rushing it a little bit. Just, uh, I'm just. Well, there's a lovely thing about the little colour studies. It's, it's just there to see the colours, how they work. I'm not really worrying. Uh, I, I never really worry with this about the drawing of it too much. I've, I, even though I sketched it, so I've got everything in the right place. I'm really not looking at getting the figure right or the windows right, but trying to just see how the colours work. And, uh, and like I said, they, they can end up really quite loose paintings and look good in their own right. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just go for the um, building. Just looking at those two killers on the house there, there's a kind of like a greeny uh, blue and a more of a blue, purple, purpley green blue here. Um, those two killers, I think you can get if you mix them with the ultramarine blue and yellow. Um, um, so it's just a different proportion. Again, it's evidence of using two color mixing. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, get my ultramarine blue out there. I've got some ultramarine blue over there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Bit of fresh bit of blue and the cadmium yellow. Get some tissue, clean my knife. Now, ultimate blue, tiny bit of that, moving it across, and then start seeing all the different colours it goes across. It's going across all these different greens, and I can get a nice shift moving over towards that using the, ult uh, the ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of blue added to that and put white with it. And so there's a colour shift between the two, moving between the yellow towards the blue colour. And I'm just putting down this yellow, just a bit more blue with it, just to get that colour. It's a little bit more blue and it's kind of a, a, a bit lighter. So I'm getting that, the two killers together again. So I'm going to bring in the, my clean brushes. Bring in the, the blue. Not very good brush that. Let's get a better quality brush. And then I got the. And then the um, greeny blue just against that same two colors again like the same two colors those colors same two colors here same two colors there I mean it kind of just points to maybe this is what Hopper's done I mean it did go to Paris and those two color mixing was there the logic of two-color mixing is still not known. And this is perhaps uh, a way of understanding it. And uh, 
they've put the colours in a line. I'm getting those lovely combinations of colours. And, and already you can see the beauty of those colours working now. Now I've got the dead grass to do now. Um, I'm just mixing the alizarin crimson, which I mixed a bit earlier here. I can see I've got some colours here. It says the alizarin crimson mixed the, with the cadmium yellow. And then just bring it in. I've got a bit of green in there as well. I've got to leave a gap for that. And I've got this uh, combinations of colours coming out. A bit more pink actually in the colour at the back there, a bit more white. And then the darker colour, I can use a bit of black with the lizard and crimson and the yellow. Adding more white with it. And then next to that is this lovely green. Now, again, the same two colours I used before to mix the trees. Uh, I'm just going to use the same green I mixed earlier, using the yellow and the green. So I'll just bring that in. That really sets those colours off nicely going across there. And um, now the petrol pumps. Petrol pumps, perhaps the easiest colour to mix. Uh, I think there's a tint of, of um, red. Of vermilion red and uh, perhaps a little bit of alizarin crimson on the side or, or with the with, mixed with it um, just buried underneath here I've got my red you can see why it took Hopper so long to do this painting you see him loads of colors in this painting it's quite quite amazing it's a wonderful thing to actually copy it because you actually are uh, appreciating it, I'm appreciating the complexity of it. I have no idea when you, you look at something and it's just uh, quite amazing how much uh, beauty and how much time's gone and effort's gone in to get these colours really kind of spot on. Just a tint of the vermilion, a bit thicker paint maybe, and then the liz and crimson mixed with the red to get the side. of the uh, petrol pumps, more lizard crimson, a bit darker at the far one, and it looks like a similar lizard crimson maybe for the roof, or maybe not. It does look a bit darker, like a dark uh, lizard crimson. If that's a, a darker lizard crimson on the roof, I perhaps won't use the vermilion. I could go uh, the side of it, uh, sorry, not use the lizard crimson, but use the vermilion with the cobalt violet to get the dark lizard crimson, so I'm going to do that. That gives me a nice dark colour, a bit like wine colour. And the red. And on, on the little roof, got a bit more green in there, so the roof. Also this colour is up in that little bit there, just bring it in. Excuse me for fingers. Now, starting to look uh, really interesting. I've got some uh, more richer browns to bring in there. I can actually use a lizard crimson and the ochre maybe to get that richer brown in the in the trees there, way darker, I'm using the ochre, coming in and again setting off, <clears throat> so it makes a bit of a difference and then I've got um, the figure to bring in and these little posts to do, anything else, I think a few black things in there. This looks a bit too yellow. I'm going to redo this with a bit more white and red. Oh, and a bit of grass down here. It's a kind of yellow-green grass. We again mixed earlier just to get those killers. That's a, a yellow-green. Uh, what I mean, a, a shade of yellow. If we should be more specific about that. Now, I've actually done a video of mixing yellow, how to mix yellow. And a lot of people are confused because when you mix yellow and you darken it, it goes green. And they're greens. For me, they're shades of yellow. 
So when you look at that video of, of mixing yellows, uh, they only dark and the mix goes green. So I'm going to do this. I did the same thing. What I did, I've got the idea of, of, of cadmium yellow. I'm going to darken cadmium yellow. Don't use yellow. I use a yellow ochre with the viridian green. And for the darker one, I use burnt sienna with the viridian green as well. So this is the colour I've got again for a clean brush. <coughs> Just uh, bring up those uh, dark, and the dark colour comes in. Again, mix more of it, sienna and the viridian green. Get some really nice dark yellows in there within that. And they're lovely. Again, it's the combinations of colour. I've got that bit of green coming in there. Need some really dark colours coming into that as well. Of the figure, what figure is, it, is wearing? It looks like a dark green blue at the at the back there. So I've got a dark green blue down here maybe. Looks a bit too green, slightly a bit of ultramarine blue with it. With then bring within that for his for drawing his leg. And as he goes up, he gets more black. I can find myself a black. <clears throat> Before I put the black on, might be a good idea to the lighter area. I've got his shirt, it's the same colour as the colour I had before, with the blue on his shirt. Just take away some of that to take a bit of paint off so I can get some nice clean colour. That's all too over painted that. Take that away. And I can get the, the shirt a similar colour to this colour over the side. It's a bit more light on that one. And his head, um, oh the black as well, the black underneath his jumper, his, uh, his arm. A bit of that black come in, that really sets things off, put a black round about here and then his face is picking up maybe some of these colours excuse me for using fingers and then just a bit of really light ochre similar colour so I think that's in the floor there appearing on his face getting a bit of light catching him too much uh, paint in there Oops. Just get a bit more paint on that, try and make him look a little bit more like a human being. There we are, just a bit of light catching him. And it's, it's the, the grey of the floor. Is uh, excuse me for speed of this, just to get that idea of the overlap. His foot's going behind that, and you get that dark a bit down about here. Um, <clears throat> now, just a few very light bits to finish off the study. I think it's okay. I think it's a bit more white, lots of white with the yellow. That looks a very light yellow. Very clean brush needed. And I've got a bit of yellow, just a tint of yellow. Lots of white, loads of white. So it's a, the white is killing the white, yellow. You don't need any gray. Because white's being the neutral killer. I can actually bring in these little bit and a bit of light around the painting a bit more around the back of him. There's a bit more light on that. <coughs> um, a bit more. These these colours there are looking a little bit too a little bit too uh, dark. Now I started off with that colour, remember? So I'm going to have to come back. And just try and get it a little bit lighter. And uh, a bit more light down here. Against that. Anyway, I think that'll do. Just these little studies. And I'm, uh, it's interesting, I mean, just, just look at the two paintings I've looked at. And I've got the same colours of the same palette. Uh, sorry, I've got different colours of this using the same palette. And uh, the two colour mixing, I think, is being used by Hopper. I don't know, but it looks like it to me. It's just the ease I've got the colours, really. Um, we're using that palette, using pairs. And if I just uh, get some tape, put that up. I've got my little colour study.
I'm ready if I want to do a copy of this painting or use a similar colours myself from a painting I want to do. I've got a combination of colours there. Um, and I'm, oh, I'm quite pleased with it, it's okay. I hope you enjoyed that, so um, I hope tune in again sometime and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Thank you again, bye.